Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. My name is Tyler Simone and you are watching Reading in Black. Today's video is all about poetry. Not only do I like to highlight black authors, but I also like to highlight black poets. And sometimes poets are also authors and authors are also poets. But today I'm going to be talking about black poets whose main thing has been poetry most of their lives. So hopefully you walk away kind of learning something new and maybe you'll fall in love with them just as much as I love them. So there are three in total that we're gonna talk about today. The first being Sonia Sanchez, who was a leading figure in the black arts movement that happened between the 1960s and the 1970s. She was also a leading figure in the civil rights movement. She's always kind of wrote poems that were geared towards the African-American audience. And she's really well known for the rhythms that are present in her poetry and infusing her poetry with musical aspects like jazz for example not only is she a poet but she's also a writer a professor an activist and a proud black feminist oh i also forgot to mention not only am i going to introduce you to three black poets but i'm also going to read a few of their poems to you Another poet that we're gonna be talking about today is Lucille Clifton, the one and only. I've talked about her before on my channel, I'm pretty sure. I've also talked about her on my bookstagram. I like her because her poems are straightforward. I can visualize what she's talking about. I connect to her because a lot of her poetry is creating positives out of negative stereotypes about the black body, about black people, and about black women specifically. So I love that about her. And I love watching her speak. I love watching her perform her poetry. So while Sonia and Lucille are our OG poets, they're a little bit older, a little bit more vintage, more classic. I'm also gonna be talking about R.H. Sin, who is a more modern poet, and he's also a man. He used social media to his advantage. He is more modern. He was one of the first poets to use Twitter to his advantage. Those 140 characters were used very, very wisely to get his point across and to get the attention of people who like poetry and specifically women because his poetry is geared towards women who are maybe trying to find themselves, who are getting out of relationships, who need to hear the truth. And that's one reason why I do like him. I think he's very straightforward, very honest and brutal sometimes. But when you're in a certain place in life, you know, as a woman, whether you're trying to move on or find yourself and love yourself more it is it's interesting to hear poetry from a man who is on your side and wants better for you so you'll hear a little bit of his poetry as well it's very interesting all of my lipstick ends up on the mug which i mean what can you do so to start off with, I'm gonna read a few poems from Sonia's poem book called Shake Loose My Skin. I got this in a small bookstore in North Carolina and I will always hold it so close to my heart. It's hard to choose, oh my goodness. Okay, since she's very well known for her haikus, I'm gonna read one of those first. It says, if I had known, if I had known you, I would have left my love at home. <laughs> Haikus are so simple. They're very straightforward and that's my kind of poetry. I know that with poems you're supposed to infer what you want to infer and visualize what you want to visualize and poems mean different things to everyone but I love a good short poem. This poem is called A Poem for My Father. How sad it must be to love so many women, to need so many black perfumed bodies weeping underneath you. When I remember all those nights, I filled my mind with long wars between short-sighted Trojans and Greeks while you slap some wide hips about in your private dungeon. When I remember your deformity, I wanna do something about your makeshift manhood. I guess that is why on meeting your sixth wife, I cross myself with her confessionals. This poem is called Blues. In the night, 
In my half hour Negro dreams, I hear voices knocking at the door. I see walls dripping, screams up and down the halls. Won't someone open the door for me? Won't someone schedule my sleep and don't ask no questions? Noise. Like when he took me to his home away from home place and I died, the long sought after death he'd planned for me. Yeah, Bessie he put in the bacon and it overflowed the pot. And two days later, when I was talking, I started to grin. As everyone knows, I am still grinning. Great, amazing, fantastic. Now we're gonna read a few of Lucille Clifton's poems from her book, The Collected Poems of Lucille Clifton, 1965 to 2010. As you can see, this book is thick. She, I don't know where she gets all her words from. It's crazy how many poems she's written. The first one that I'm gonna read is called Mirror. And I've never read this one, by the way. It says, one day, we will look into the mirror and the great nation standing there will shake its head and frown the way babies do who are just born and can't remember why they asked for just these people, just this chance. And when we close our eyes against regret, we will be left alone in the wrong image, not understanding what we are or what we had hoped to be. So like I was telling you earlier, Lucille likes to write about women's bodies in a positive way, specifically black women's bodies. But this poem here, it's called Nude Photograph, and I think that it can appeal to all women. She says, here is the woman's soft and vulnerable body, everywhere on her turning round into another wear shadows on her promising mysterious places promising the answers to questions impossible to ask who could rest one hand here or here and not feel whatever the shape of the great hump longed for in the night a certain joy a certain yes satisfaction yes yes mm-hmm mm-hmm this next poem that I'm gonna read is one that I did bookmark that I thought was really good apparently. It doesn't have a name, but I must have bookmarked it for a reason. It says, this belief in the magic of whiteness, that it is the smooth pebble in your hand, that it is the godmother's best gift, that it explains, allows, assures, entitles, that it can sprout singular blossoms like Jack's bean and singular verandas from which to watch them rise. It is a spell winding round on itself, Grimm's awful fable, and it turns into Cape Town and Johannesburg as surely as the beanstalk leads to the giant's actual country where Jack lies broken at the meadow's edge and the land is in ruins, no magic, no anything. That was a good one. You can tell she was just a really sweet woman. Look at her, just sweet talented and an amazing writer wow and last but certainly not least i will be reading a few poems from r h sin's book she just wants to forget the first one i'm going to read is called process letting go let go of him by loving yourself more than he's chosen to let go of him by realizing that you are worth more than he can ever comprehend I guess I'm just hoping that these words will make a difference. Maybe they won't, maybe they will. No matter what, I'll keep trying. Let go of him because the love you claim to have for him causes you pain. Let go of him by choosing happiness over pain and heartache. When you love yourself, giving yourself to the wrong person is something you'll try your hardest to avoid. Let go of him and keep yourself. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. This next one is called Her Choice. Maybe she's single by choice. Maybe she's decided that after some time of being overlooked, 
underappreciated and neglected that she no longer wants to be placed in a situation where she feels like she's wasting her time. Maybe she's single because she promised herself to never settle for less than what she's always wanted and deserves. August 30th, 2013. She won't give up on you easily, but that doesn't mean you should see how far you can go with causing her pain before she's finally gone. Short and sweet, short and sweet, love it. Encourage is the next one. Let's encourage women to be brave enough to walk away instead of placing heavy blame or making them feel guilty for giving up on someone who quit on them a long time ago. Absolutely. freaking lovely These next two are both very short and neither one of them have titles. So I'll just read one and then I'll read the other. She's worth everything. I knew this the moment I heard her laugh. It hurts in the beginning, but the end was necessary, and one day you'll realize that you'll be everything to the right person. Until then, be everything to yourself. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, okay. I'll read one more. This one is called Scene 49. The first man she'd ever love was the first man she'd be disappointed by. His best example of what a man was would later lead her into the arms of the worst men she could ever choose and this is why I don't blame her for choosing the type of guy whom she could never truly depend on. Her first love was her father. He taught her to settle because in order to love him she had to put aside his worst traits. She had to ignore all of his flaws. She took a cracked canvas and painted over it in an attempt to make something beautiful. She took what little he gave her and did what she could to make it appear more than what it truly was. He taught her how to love a man and so she went on to care for men who lacked the same things her father did. I mean, that is She Wants to Forget by R.H. Sin. I haven't gotten through the whole thing yet, but I like to pick it up every now and then and read a few poems. I like that it's small and it can fit in my purse because, you know, who doesn't want to read poetry every now and then? Of course, that is only three of the many amazing Black poets who have lived, who are now gone, like Lucille Clifton, but there are so many others that are still here writing amazing poetry like R.H. Sin, and I think that it's important that we talk about them more and we shed light on their poetry because they exist and they're writing amazing things. With that being said, hopefully you enjoyed hearing a little bit of poetry today and found one of these amazing poets interesting and want to read more. Happy Black History Month, celebrating Black authors and Black poets all the time, all year long, but especially during this month. I'm still reading The Vanishing Half, which was written by Britt Bennett. She's an amazing Black author, and yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you all so much for watching. If you're a new subscriber, hello, welcome to my channel. I'm happy to have you. If you're not subscribed yet, please do. I would love for you to join the crew. I will be back next Tuesday with another video. I hope you have an amazing rest of your day. I'll see you soon. Bye.